Set. Yes, sir. Back in, back in better than ever. Let's get to it. Better left on the set. Episode 45. Episode 45. Mm. A lot to cover, my guy. A lot to cover. Oh, you watched that fight last night? Yeah. Well, well it, was, I mean, it, was, it was daytime. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that daytime, shit ended real quick. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to see it. I just saw, I just saw the hate that everybody noticed. Yeah, man. Prayers to that man, cause that yeah, that's what I'm saying. You gotta they say you don't play boxing, bro. You could be a fighter, yeah. You could be a wrestler. Boxing is very specific skill mm -hmm. set, bro. Very much so. It's designed for you to use your hands as best as possible, bro. And that's all. And it's about technique and all too. Timing. Listen, Anthony Joshua put that man on his. Man, listen, Nigga, damn near tore his ACL. For, the for crazy thing day. is, like, boxers get knocked out, but they rarely be out cold like that. Though his, they his rarely shit be locked out. up. He was out of there. Yeah, he was, he was done. They had the paramedics in there, bro. Yeah, That's what I'm saying, bro. Stay out that ring, dog. Like, Yo, did you see his knee? Ring. Yes. You see <laughs> laying Yo, I thought he tore his ACL, chair. dog. They lawn chair. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, man. Speaking of sports, the Lakers been doing all right, too. Yeah. Shout out to uh, my boy D'Lo, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, he been he been um, forty four with the uh, the game winner. Mm -hmm. And uh, my boy just got the uh, game saving block, too. Spencer Dinwiddie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Lakers, Lakers, uh, they're competing. I'm saying we always got the chance. We got two of the best players in the game. So, what do you uh, what do you think the chances are this year? Um, we'll see. I mean, the West is uh, I mean, it's, Jokic is Jokic. I'm saying he's been anytime anybody's is threatened to be like, oh, they might be a championship contender. They play them, and Jokic bust their ass. So yeah, we seen what they did. This is I'm the Boston. I'm gonna keep it hundred. We're not beating the Denver Nuggets unless somebody get hurt. That's all I would say. Nobody is. Yeah, I, I completely agree with nobody that. Nobody I completely agree with that. I don't see nobody. I mean, yeah, I don't see many people who can beat him. And they just, their team is just overall just good. You know, you got to think about besides Joker, you got Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon who are just, they're both, what, 6'10"? Yeah. Role players that, yeah. that know their role. And right? they do their role well. They play defense. They can hit a shot. And they do everything they need to do. And they're 6'10". Ain't nobody's really guarding that. And then you know you have Jamal Murray doing what he does. Yeah, you're one of the best point guards in the league. Mm -hmm. You got he's, the best to me, he's underrated player. though. They won't even put him in All Star nowhere near close to an All Star game for some reason. I mean, has it? He ain't made. No, he ain't made All Star game yet. That can't be true. No. Man, cause yeah. he twenty, he twenty easy, twenty point per game easy. Twenty five at this point. Nah, he makes. I don't know, twenty five. That's playoff series with Jamal Murray, not okay. regular season. But he still he still hasn't made an All Star game, and I think that's kind of crazy. Damn. I mean, he gonna be one of them unsung heroes where people know how good it was, but you had to be there to remember it. The type of guys, chunk, um, like a, yeah, I mean, like a what? Oh, Kevin Martin, some shit. Okay. Like Rashard Lewis type guy. Okay, okay. Rashard yeah. Lewis me the whole game. He was hard to lose that dude. Yeah, he was. Ray he was. Allen, you know what I mean? People just remember Ray Allen for shooting threes, but he was that dude. He was that guy, especially that with the dude. Bucks early. Yeah. Yeah, what the what's it called with the Sonics early. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh yeah, he averaged twenty. Yeah, I mean he yeah. averaged twenty so career, so. Yeah, shout out to Jamal Murray, but yeah, they, I mean, the Nuggets are the Nuggets, bro. But yeah, he playoff, he averages 26 per year. So he's yeah, so yeah, he's different in the playoffs. He's one of them uh, playoff. Yeah. Little Jimmy Butler type dudes. Definitely, I agree. I agree. So yeah, um, yeah. you want to get into some, uh, some, some, some shit that's been going on? I don't know where you've been at, man. You, um, you know, we got new music. We do. We got, um, people that's affiliated with music. We do. Um, before I get into, you know, all of the salacious shit, let's just talk about new music. You heard that Cardi? The, uh, like what, Freestyle? Yeah. I did. I Thoughts? did. I mean, it's not for me, bro. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think Cardi is, she is in a, a rock and a hard place in her career, and she put herself there, bro. You waited so long. To drop again? To do doing all these random singles that lead into nowhere. Mm-hmm. A freestyle that's a song but has a full fledged video with a full budget behind it, it just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. What is what is the end, end goal with that? Hey man, I know you're not gonna agree with this, but at certain parts it sounds like you know who Ski Master Song God is? Yeah, I know who Ski Master Song God. He did that same thing and there's certain parts that sound just like his when he offered that same beat, it sound just like the sound Miss exactly LA like beat, yeah. yep. I mean, that's what happens. I mean, it's going, it's going to be the same. We're dealing with people that's not... I mean, it's, it's damn near a cover. 
Yeah, literally. It's, it's damn near covered. The bars is going to be what the bars is. The girls have a, a certain select amount of, of subject matters that they talk mm-hmm. about. The Cardi B's, the, the City Girls, the Megan the Signs, they too. have the same subject matter. So you get a beat that we heard before. I honestly thought it was like a Flo Millie sounding type of shit. Okay. That's what it reminded me of. Okay, but, okay. Yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a good look. It's not going to do much. I think she just wanted to throw something out there just to keep people off her back about not dropping drop music. Yeah, yeah, at this point, I, I want to know if you're gonna drop music at all. At this point, you gonna keep or she's gonna keep doing these random singles. She has shown no signs of her dropping out. I mean, let's be let's just be honest. Yeah, I agree. It, no rollout preparation has been teased. No, nothing. I thought something was gonna happen when she and her and Offset was going back and forth. But that's what I thought. Apparently, that was for him. Listen, I really thought music was yeah. gonna come out for that one. So, cause she was doing all the talking. Yeah, and I thought something she was gonna drop. But I thought she was gonna try to capitalize, try to step on Nicki mm-hmm. release and all that. Then you got Nicki doing all she can to keep this girl, female legend, like you know, what I'm saying yeah. a certain level of tier alive. You know, it's none funny of the because other ones is. is it's funny about that. I was saying that, you know, Nikki was trying to anticipate when Cardi was dropping so she yeah. could drop her album at the same time. And Cardi ran away from that one. I mean, Nikki's Nikki, right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, I agree. you can call her crazy. You can call her a hater, jealous, all that. At the end of the day, she turned out to be right about literally all the women, right? Mm-hmm. I agree. All the women. None of y'all are committed to making quality music and like dropping and putting yourselves out there. Call, saying what you really want with your chest and dealing mm-hmm. with the consequences. Mm-hmm. Not you, y'all throwing rocks behind your hand. You don't want to have a, a battle. You don't do nothing. Yeah, we you, can say you, anything you about Nikki. She has been ready for a smoke at all times since, she, all since time. she came in the game. Yeah, so she went at whoever, did whatever, said whatever, and, and she's been on top ever since. You know, you, she's our, she pretty is the greatest, greatest. I, I mean, I would have to agree. She she has the greatest career for sure. Definitely for for a woman rapper in history. And to me, she stands with a lot of, you know, when it comes to even just rap overall, just because, you know, what rap was kind of based off of, yeah. just, you know, like when you talk about MC, the competition, yeah. she was ready to do it at all times, you know? Cypher. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's really no part of her career that she has not crossed that hip hop requirement. I mean, you got the freestyles, mm-hmm. you got the ciphers. She did the BT ciphers. You, watched you that got shit. The, the diss songs. Mm-hmm. You got the full fledged just rap tracks. You got the features where mm-hmm. you you cooking everybody on the on the song. You right. having the best verse. It's just like yeah, she is embodied hip hop, the fashion, the setting the trend with what you look at. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She is hip hop. She sure. is hip hop for sure. She's hip hop. So I mean, shout out to Nicki. I agree. I, I agree. Every time one of these girls drop the ball, it just it shows how much how Nikki, right she how, was exactly yeah. how right she was and how important she is because without her, like come on, bro, it, it's disgusting. Where would y'all be at without her at this point? Cause I mean, I and see the bad part about it. I thought that Meg would have capitalized off of that too. I did too. I, was, I thought she I was, was always waiting for an that, album. Man. I thought she was like, "Please give me, like, you know, cool. Maybe you're not just a rapper to just throw out diss tracks where you could just go in there and just do a full fledged rap album. I mean, rap song, just dissing somebody, cool. But yeah, you dropping these little songs, dissing this person, dissing that person. Drop your album. Drop an EP. Drop something. Do something. You announcing a tour with no music doesn't. Yeah, because we see what your last album did. It came and went quick. Nobody even remembered the title. No one sing. Like, come on, but the last one that was that was even relevant was what 2021, 22? Yeah, it's been a while. Huh? It's been a while. Listen, man. And then you got Lotto. She teasing this this beef with Ice Spice. You drop a song that's not even a diss song. You in like, yeah. in, in the Bronx doing doing nothing. doing what? That's Sunday funny. service. I thought when the Sunday service sounded like a funeral to me. I Horrible. thought she was coming. I thought she was coming out the bottom. Horrible. If we keeping it real, the only new girl that has been has not had a misstep with her rap career is Ice, Ice Spice. Spice. Mm-hmm. Ice Spice. She dropped a project. She mm-hmm. dropped a single, and she got the looks. She keeping her name relevant. She associated with the right people. The right people. She up there and tell us what's on the Super Bowl. Come on, bro. Yeah. So she means she wants scared to drop a project. Even when y'all say she one hit wonder, mm-hmm. drop six, seven songs, get my whole body. Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. I'm done. Well, you know she's associated with Nicki. That is true. So I mean, that is true. But hold on now. That helped Nikki a lot too. Hey, no, it did. It did. Nikki hey, hey, we're not. Saying, but I'm saying, I, you know, you put both of them together. You see, what, you know what Nikki did, and yeah. you see she, they both associated with each yeah. other. It just kind of, it's it's going I mean, in that yeah, same path. That New York, you know, yeah. what I'm saying connection. Yeah, and because we don't, and we don't see that often in New York either. That is true. But so I, I thank What's you. the guys. last time y'all had like a uh, well, yeah, with the a Boogie Don Q or some shit? Well, I can't. <laughs> 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 Pop smoking. Pop, yo, pop, boom. 
Yeah. I'm asking. I don't know. Rowdy and Bobby, Bobby. but okay. Yeah. But you know, you see them. He's got locked and came yeah, back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Rowdy. I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, he's still trying to rap, but you I mean, know what, Fabulous. Bobby? You know what, Bobby? You doing? Fabulous and Diddy uh, came out with the act bad right there. Huh? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> hey, we're not gonna, can we can we leave Diddy out for a second? He's next say you don't never party with him. Hey, 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 hey! You saw what Diddy was talking to him and Jada. Exactly. Fact exactly. was real uncomfortable. I want, you to, I want you to get intimate. Yeah, yeah. intimate party with Yo. him. What, what you mean? Fact, like, uh, what? Hold on, OG. Hold on, OG. <laughs> you tripping, dog? I mean, um, oh, Meek drop music. Schoolboy Q drop music. Did you listen to either one of those? Yeah, I listen to both. Uh, okay. Uh, Meek Mill. This is gonna hit for Meek Mill fans. Um, it's really not much to say. It's five songs. Uh. It's uh, nothing that super stands out, but it's, it's good Meek Mill. Yeah, yeah, it's it's what it's what Meek does to me. Yeah. That's that's Meek's bag. The you know the more of the trappish beat wise, get a little hype. You know that's that's his flow. I like I like it. Actually, I like it. It was solid. I can hear that some of the songs being played out. You know, the Journal with Future. I can hear that being played. Yeah. You know, even the one with, I agree. Uh, yeah. Even the one with Father, just because of everybody's on that that beat, yeah. that, that um, Jersey club music type beat. So I can hear that being played out. So yeah, I definitely I think it's cool. I think this is where I think Meek is better at. You know, you kind of you don't need a twenty five song album. Do five, ten EPs or albums, quick little twelve. Get straight to the point. Do what you do in your bag and keep it at that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just don't think it's gonna do much for his career, but I do. Think oh yeah, no, definitely not. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's, it's if you like Meek, that's what you get. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Uh, Schoolboy Q. Long away, it's been years. Mm-hmm. When, when was the last uh project? What was that uh, Crash Talk, which is 20 something? Um, I'll tell you right now. Schoolboy Q last yeah. project was Crash Talk in 2019. 2019, yeah. So, so it's been five, five years. years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like Crash Talk. Chopsticks, Num Num Juice, uh, Floating, 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Water with Little Baby, yeah, those. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent album. Yeah, I feel like that was more of him, like, that was his commercial album. Yeah, he's very much so commercial. Um, you just look at the features, look at the production on there. Yeah, just very to me that sound like more of his commercial album. Yeah, but um, yeah, like you said, uh, waited. Uh, I'm still listening to it. I'm still trying to really process all of it because you know it has. I've listened to Schoolboy Q albums before. I like Schoolboy Q. Songs, yeah. yeah, his production has always been pretty different. To say it's like you know he'll have something that's like to get you hyped. That's like a trap song. Then he have something that's just like real like jazzish like real instrumental type and it's just it's a lot of that going on so it's just kind of i'm still digesting it i'm not, so far it's cool i'm just still trying to you know grasp it um i ain't never liked schoolboy q really no he's a he, he his music is too abstract it's 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 incoherent for me like <laughs> it's just a bunch of noises it's not like he's the greatest lyricist in the world either so like i don't understand what point he's trying to get across with his music okay you know what i'm saying it's like half gang bangish mm-hmm. and it's like then you get like a fence staple comical shit then the beat be super hard one song then it's like a jazzy instrumental the yeah. next song it's like i don't know what it's what his fan base is Abstract. What, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I don't that, know. That, that's that's what we're going for. Abstract, yo. Yeah, I never liked Schoolboy Q. Um, I never liked the pairing when they tried to put him and Kendrick in like the same, and it was like who had the better count, like Stop and Rush, whatever, bro. I know it's TDE and all that, but nah, I, I'm gonna pass on it. Um, I listened to probably half of the album. I got to the so the first song is not even a song. It's no, just it's like humming for two minutes. You get this rock song with Rico Nasty, and her style is just very unique and specific. The yeah. yelling and the snap, the slap a bitch today, and all that shit. And then you get the first good song, which is Thank God for Me, when it actually raps. Yeah, I like that. Decides to rap with mm-hmm. an actual song that's consistent. <laughs> then you get a lot, a bunch of mumbling, and I don't know. I, I, I don't see the the schoolboy Q appeal. I don't. Okay. It is not. It's not for me. Uh, I don't. I don't hear the. I hear a. Like him talking about the West Coast, but it don't sound like West Coast. So. He do have a few songs on there that sound real, real, real West Coast. Yeah, real West Coast. I, I, but I get what you're saying. It, it's definitely different. I can. Um, he does kind of, in a sense, like have his own little like sound. I don't really see. I don't really hear too much, too many people with that same sound. Like you said, it's like yeah. you said, it's real abstract. It's, it can be all over the place at times. Um, I like. 
I'm a fan of Schoolboy Q. I like him. I've, um, out of TDE, besides Kendrick, him and like J Rock are the people I listen to. J Rock has had a, that last album was phenomenal. Yeah, it was. So I mean, um, um, so I mean, Sir is gonna be the best out of TDE for me. Sir and uh, Sizzle. Mm, okay. None of the rappers. <laughs> Cause the other, another guy just dropped two out of um, TDE. I forgot his name, but he had a song with Pusha T. Oh yeah, I just I just seen that. Uh, right into I didn't even listen to it. Like that. Is it Ray Devon? What's the name of that? Damn. You, I think you might be right. Uh, yeah, Ray Vaughn. Yeah, Ray Vaughn. My bad. My bad. Ray Vaughn. He he raps things. What do you do? He's a rapper. Okay, I, I didn't listen to him. He's a rapper. To him. Uh, he's got. Matter of fact, let me just play a little bit. Just because TDE definitely, this is supposed to be the year everybody's supposed to be dropping. Literally, and we have the the fans have been asking for this for a very long time, and this is the first big year without they big they the work for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, their biggest and, artist, the big artist, right? So, so yeah, this is a freestyle. Uh, Ray Vaughn got famous for. So, so you ain't like none of none of um none of Schoolboy Q song. Uh, I like Num Num Juice. I like Num Num Juice. But. I that you would never find. See niggas scared of their demons. I make friends with mine. I might have to speak the truth, but I never I lie. I need something to feel alive when I'm dead inside. All my personal issues I'm learning to set aside. Cause I planted the scene and niggas came with pesticides. Give y'all my. Okay. Okay. Alright, he's rapping. I mean, he's rapping like he was rapping, but I don't know yeah. if he was rapping. <laughs> He was passionate about whatever he was saying. He, he was giving yo, he was giving you game, though. Things came around. You you can go bar for bar with him? Yes. Like I think I can honestly go bar for bar with a lot of these dudes. Anybody younger than 35, you're cool. You just fool you, man. Give me a freestyle real quick. Never. Oh <laughs> you wanna play instrumental? Never. You trash, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you trash yourself. Um This is trash, man. Well, you wanna talk about one of the biggest names in music? Who's that? Uh, Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Brother Love, Pub Daddy. Uh, Get into it, man. Lead the, lead the way. This is, uh, I remember it was a debate on who was the king of New York not too long ago, him and Jay Z. Since this, I mean, you should, you, you for me, you familiar with his catalog, you for me with his storyline and all that. So, I mean, yeah, lead the way. This is this is your area of, of expertise. You know about the no no the no 90s no no this, no, no, this is this is our area of expertise. I'm saying you know about P Diddy is what I'm saying. Y'all familiar with his his reputation? Everybody's and, familiar you know, with P Diddy. I'm asking you. Don't ask me nothing. Ask the crowd. What's the story? The story is. I mean, there's a lot of stories. Okay. You know, there was um someone who just came out a producer on his last project. Okay. You got a story? Uh, yeah, I can pull it up. Uh, Actually, I was reading it and I didn't like it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it felt it felt nasty, bro. Goddamn search history, love. Yeah, I had, I had to go back and it. It's man. real suspect, you know. Um, but pretty much there was a young man who was producing on Diddy's album. Okay. And pretty much initially, go back in time, he pretty much said that Diddy ain't pay him. Okay. And he was trying to, you know. Started a GoFundMe account saying, "Hey, he needs some people to help him sue Diddy." Okay, that was the start of it. Then he went on record. Rodney Jones, Lil Rod, Lil Rod. That's a that's a funny name, bro. Lil Rod, Lil Rod is crazy. Um, then pretty much, you know, he went on to just kind of say, like, in a little dep deposition, and pretty much throw all these claims and accusations towards Diddy and how you know he had his son out there getting young girls to come to his underage girls to come to parties mm. he has Stevie J out there getting people women to come on his parties he's had supposedly Stevie J was having sex with men mm. um, he said that Diddy was having relations with a Philadelphia rapper who used to date Nicki Minaj Ooh. also with a famous artist who just did Super Bowl would that be Usher would that be Usher Raymond Usher Raymond and we just seen a video talking with um, what's what's his name? Um, Simmons. What's his name? Oh, Russell Simmons. Russell and Simmons we, and Usher we're and Bobby. We're gonna get to that. So um, yeah, it's getting real nasty with the Diddy accusations, man. Yeah. So Lil Rod, uh, Rodney Jones, uh, I have an article here. Here, 
Um, he says in a lawsuit that he lived and traveled with Combs from September 2022 to November 2023. He recorded <laughs> hours of video and audio of Combs and his staff and others engaging in serious illegal activity. Oh, I, see, I skipped that part because I just yeah. wanted to hear the salacious shit. <laughs> no, it's, it's right I mean, there. It's illegal right is there. crazy. Among the allegations is that Combs forced Jones to procure sex workers and pressure him to engage in unwelcome sex acts with them and others that Combs gave laced alcohol beverages to people who attended parties at his homes. That's why Diddy always say that there's no phones yeah. at his parties. The lawsuit includes what it says are screenshots from gatherings hosted at Combs homes that included underage girls, sex workers, and some of whom he said were provided drinks that had been laced with drugs. The, the suit filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York also names Combs' adult son, Justin, his chief of staff, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO, Sir Lucian Grange, oh, and former Lucian. Motown Records CEO as defendants. This is sexy, though, though. He's looking for $30 million in why, the lawsuit. Why do you think he asked for 30 mil? How much did, uh, what's his name ask for? Uh, Cassie asked for. She got 30 mil. Did she get 30 mil? Yep. Or did she ask for 30 mil? Because they still. Oh, yeah, they said it, yeah. but no, nobody said how much. Right, yeah. How much was well, she asked for 30 mil? It was 30 mil, too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, man, that's the magic That's the magic number, apparently. So, uh, and, that's, and that's why you got to be careful when you settle, because you open the floodgates. You do. Now, everybody want to come out. Because we don't know if this is true or false, but what we do know is that the information that she provided, that can be accounted for for people that was around. They can make stuff sound very similar. Very, very much similar. Because if I like the party, he is self-proclaimed yeah. Mr. Party Man. And, and I mean, listen, we've we've heard all of the. If I could just pull it up, we've heard we've heard all of the things about Diddy parties, no exactly. phones, it be drugs in there. It's it goes crazy. So, I mean, just off of, <clears throat> I know you've read it and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. have you? What What are your thoughts behind it? Um, I think. Uh, I think this is all kind of aligned with what uh, the Cat Williams and, you know what I mean, the, the whole Illuminati thing has been, people have been, the, what they call it, uh, dog uh, call, dog whispers have been mm -hmm. saying for years. Okay. Uh, I think it's now it's just time that people are getting to a point where they see an opportunity to, to take advantage of the timing of something. Mm -hmm. I, agree. I agree. You know what I mean? So. Because once, because you heard nothing until Cass came out. And not only that, there was a law in New York that said something that was changing. They was changing pretty to, much so. that you had. I think you had uh, two years or so. Yeah, exactly. And once you done, you can't no longer, you know, follow exactly. That. And uh, now like it went from like originally you want to send these people to jail, but you realize well that's going to be a, a very difficult task. But mm -hmm. one thing you can do to hurt them is hurt their money. reputation, their reputation, and take some money. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll make your tears go away if you wipe them away with a hundred dollar bill. I mean, with thirty mil, listen, listen, I know what I do with thirty mil. Tough. Listen, <laughs> tough. I wouldn't be uh, saying. I just think it's like, hey man, you can't get away with stuff, but for so long, some stuff comes back to you, whether it's true or false. It got to be some type of truth because there's too many people saying the same thing. The same thing, yeah. Whether they were uh, complicit, you know what I mean? They were cool with it at the time. They changed their mind later. At the end of the day, if you're doing whatever you're doing, you got to be ready for somebody to come out and expose your secrets. And that's really the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? They can't expose nothing that you wasn't doing. That's really as simple as it is. So, Very true. Very I mean, true. these niggas that get locked up for murder 20, 35 years after the fact. Agreed. So, Do you think they did it? I asked your thoughts first. I said, we said at the same time. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Did what? That's the thing. So, yes, I said, give me your thoughts first. I don't even know what you're asking. Okay. So, I agree with the sentiment you had. Um, the one thing I do disagree with to an extent, I feel like if you was complicit in some of this shit and didn't want to come out years later, Tom, no, I don't think that's that's not right. Come on, though. Don't, don't, 
You know what I'm saying? That's like we both go kill somebody and then you're like, nah. Two years later, like, nah, I ain't really, I don't think we should have killed him. Let me go ahead and snitch on you and just throw you out there. Like, eh, come on, nigga. He was definitely part of it, though. Like, you, I don't like that shit. Are you sure? I'm positive. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just not a fan of it. If you're gonna, if so you don't. You're saying you, 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 you saying you don't like people changing their mind. Changing the narrative after the fact, thing. yeah. You know, to try to, you know, uh, you know, to try to make a come up off of it. So do you think it's strictly about people trying to get a come up and trying to just take advantage of the timing of the situation? Right now, yes. Because, I mean, look, okay. look at what he said. He said he was traveling, he was living and traveling with Diddy mm -hmm. from 2020 to 2023. Mm -hmm. If you look at it specifically with him in that timeline, you went from everything is good, oh, snap, you didn't get paid, and now let me just throw everything out there. And obviously you was engaging in something at some point in time, and now you coming out like, yo, I need to study him. And let okay. me just let me expose everything. So to me, that's you trying to make a come up. Does that make it any less illegal? So for for example, your example, you said two of us go commit a murder. Mm -hmm. Don't go back and then tell like hey, he committed a murder, and you try to act like you wasn't cool with it at the time, right? Right. As you said, mm -hmm. does that still make that person not a murder? No, that, murder, shit, right? that shit don't change. Oh, we, that's we, all I'm saying. We, we so both call bodies. It's cool. Right, what I'm saying is so. If this person sees the opportunity, whether they change their mind or not, it still makes him correct guilty for what he right. did. However, that don't mean I that don't mean I like the shit that you did. I'm I'm saying I'm just saying I'm just saying you imagine oh, imagine if we if we caught this body two years ago right now yeah, yeah, yeah. and now I come out and what if nigga had to check nigga Muslim and all that you know what I'm saying had to change the heart religious now, nigga leave your past you baby boy right hey leave your past and past and that time baby boy to... now you seen baby boy they change had to change the heart and all that wanted to get it off his spirit. Nah, nigga, my spirit is, is, has changed completely. That spirit is no longer here. <laughs> that, shit is, that shit is dead with the rest of me. Just saying. Just saying. You, you, you know what? I'm going to give you a perfect example of that shit, right? Go ahead, go ahead. All right, so a few years ago, I was introduced to this girl by some of my friends. Okay. It happened that it was three of us, right? The dude knew two girls. Me and my boy was talking to his two friends, whatever. Cool. He was with a girl. Him and his girl kept getting into it. They felt, you know, and one day he decided, he was like, damn, man, you know, I just got to clear my conscience, right? Mm -hmm. So he started telling all his, his girl, like, everything he's done and, you know, trying to make it better so she trusts him. But in that same aspect, right, this is this is a minute down the road. We, we boys, we hanging out, so he know everything. He decides to hit up the girls that I, the girl I was talking to and the girl that my boy was talking to, hit him up mm -hmm. and like, yo, I just um, want to tell you that. Sean and such and such, they be out here with all these other girls, they be doing this and that. Y'all shouldn't really trust them, da da da. Mm -hmm. And you know, then he goes back and says, Hey man, I just need to clear my conscience. Mm -hmm. No, nigga, clear the conscience on your fucking self. That ain't got shit to do with us. Uh, to me, that's, just, that's the same thing. You that's was not cool. the same thing. No, 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 that's no, not no, the same no. thing. Listen, Hold on. Because cool. Cassie was directly involved in it. No, no, no but he wasn't directly involved. No, no, no. He was, he was outside with us too. But I'm saying that shit. he's not in a relationship with the girl, he's, he, he's telling. No, he was he no, but he told his girl what he used to well, do. I'm saying you said he reached out to the girls. No, he was so, doing, that's right? what I'm saying. He he told his girl mm -hmm. and he told the girls that he was messing with. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was not directly involved with them girls that he's messing with. So that's completely different than somebody actually being involved in the situation, right? I mean, he's clearing. What I'm saying is that clearing conscious shit is fucking. Oh, I can't say what I want to say. Shit. <laughs> 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 I want to say some words, but yeah, that clearing clear. conscious shit, nah, nigga, dead that shit. If you want to be a changed man, change completely. What you mean? No, leave, leave that shit. Let that shit die. Now you trying to, no, no, now no, you trying to kill, kill now yourself. Now you trying to go kill that part of yourself. Chain. Now hell no. Nah. Kill that part of yourself. Don't and leave your past so, so, your so you can't just admit one thing without having to admit everything else. How okay. that work? Admit that shit for yourself. Don't admit it with don't. Yo, listen. All I'm saying is, do not put anybody else involved in your bullshit, man. I agree to that, but Cassie's talking about what she was doing with him. See, I'm not even talking about Cassie. I'm just talking about. I'm, I'm talking, talking about she changed her fucking conscience. She did. She did because she was tired of getting beat on. <laughs> she was tired, <laughs> and she said she's probably a little down right now. So she. That's what I'm saying. Give me saying. some fucking money for my troubles, huh? Yeah. I held you down for all the money. But I ain't exposed your secrets. Exactly. That's worth thirty million, right? It's exactly. really worth more if you want to keep up. Honestly, that's what I'm saying. So, so what? So what we talking about, honey? What we talking about? But this is. I'm going. I'm just speaking from men to men. I can't. I can't speak for a woman. You know but they got, I'm, we talking about we talking about no, no, lawsuits. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you know. I'm talking about lawsuits as a man. You know what I'm saying? If Diddy out here, you know what I'm saying? If Diddy out here raping you, dog, you. Oh, sorry, raping you. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> time out, brother. 
If Diddy out here doing that, do as a man, you need to stand on it. Do something. Stand up for yourself. Don't wait until after the fact when you ain't getting paid and now you're like, oh man, he out here doing some so nice relationship. So now you tell him now you tell them victims how they should be reacting. Is that what I'm asking? I'm asking you a question. You telling victims how they should react in a situation that's that, that that contains violence and threats and damaging careers and they don't tell them what the future for them gonna look like. I'm asking you. Could Diddy powerful, right? We'll be back. Hey. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> Crazy. What's wrong with this guy? I'll be back. I'll be forgetting that you know certain words are. That's all I'm saying. You gotta, you gotta be mindful. Man. I just move on, man. This nigga Usher was out there with Freaky Man. And oh, oh, see, I don't know, but all I know is that I just seen a little a little thing about how oh uh, man I was going through and I just woke up and he was on my bedside and yeah, I I don't know what happened. Russell Simmons been out in Bali forever. And I don't, I don't know what he got going on. So somebody tell me, please. So. Russell Simmons has. This, first of all, there's a whole documentary out. And basically exposed on Russell Simmons has been sexually assaulting women for years. And that started that Me Too movement. It, yeah. And uh, a woman wanted to expose him. Uh, they used to work in the industry and how difficult it's been. He's denied these allegations, but he also has moved out of the country. A lot of people say that those things are inter are, are related to, to country, avoid, you know what I'm saying, convictions, indictments, such and such. He also Does Bali have extradition? Uh, no extradition law we see. He also uh has some issues with his ex wife and the kids with uh with the money and apparently, you know what I mean his whole conspiracy theory about him. Uh, being scammed out of his shares of uh, his his record label and such, and they say Bali money goes a lot farther. Mm. If you rich there, no extradition. No, he does not have an extradition okay, treaty. So. All these are tied. So this has been going on for some years. With Russell Simmons, Usher just had probably one of the biggest years of his career, thirty year career. Finally got the Super Bowl and had Vegas residency for a few years. Mm -hmm. Fans love him. Just dropped a new album, sold a lot of records, uh, all that. Just got married as well. He did. Let's keep that in mind. Just he got married. So he time. submitted. He submitted, and he just announced the tour. Mm -hmm. Just announced the tour. So it sold out extremely quickly. You gone? I gotta see my budget. Yeah, that should look a little. He decided to pop up in Bali, do some yoga <laughs> with Russell Simmons and, and several women. Uh, is, it, is that a problem? So, and let me read the caption that uh, Russell decided to post. When I was at the lowest point in my life, I woke up and this man was sitting by my bed. I have known Usher since he was a kid, but we really bonded because of our mutual love for self-discovery in our belief in yogic science as a direct route to realizing God's consciousness in ourselves. People remember to remember this, but people remember to remember this. A friend walks in when others walk out. I will never forget the generosity of spirit I witnessed in this man. God bless you, baby bro. Usher, love you. All right. <clears throat> so, because of the ignorant person I am, that first line when he was like, because we bonded over self-discovery. Mm -hmm. Sound <laughs> madness to meet up. I mean, you that, just read uh, the, the PDB lawsuit that accusations that said Usher was part of it. Intimately involved. Yeah. With so, P. Diddy, so. so, yeah, that self discovery shit sound, yeah, sound, that sound real in this yoga science. Y'all are trying, y'all are getting freaky, dog. Right. <laughs> yeah, the industry is full of a bunch of freaks. Like, y'all just, like, y'all gotta just try some wild shit just because I feel like one thing just not enough for you. you just like, all right, I just gotta go out here and just, let me go out to Bali and try it. <sighs> should us should be counsel? Is he supporting sexual abuser? I'm asking you. All right, here's how I look at it. So, it's weird, right? So... Am I supporting you by being your friend if you out here doing some wild shit? I, like, even if I don't speak, like, 
because everyone's famous, so this is a little different. You feel like people feel like, oh, they should be speaking on it, whether it's against it or whatever. Okay. So you can have, so you can have a stance on where you are. A statement can mean a lot. Yeah, yes, it yes. can. But I feel like, like for me and you boys, if you do some wild shit, that don't mean I gotta go speak on it. I can speak to you about it, but yo, I don't agree. Blah blah blah. That don't make me. That don't mean that I have to stop being your friend because you out here doing some wild ass shit. Just because I don't agree with it, or the public may not agree with it. What if it's actually? something you don't agree with if it's something that's what i'm saying if it's something that i don't agree with i can talk to you i don't have to bash you in the media i don't have to bash you in public i can talk to you about it you know they was um watching a fucking joe bunch the other day it was something about how kanye was going out just like saying whatever and people just kind of like you know there were certain people that just didn't say anything at all because they may have been closer to kanye than whatever yeah. so instead of just like that so people automatically assume whether you're against them or not it's like yo I don't have to talk about that with everyone. I can talk about it between me and my friend. Yeah. So, I mean, this may be one of those things where, you know, I haven't seen Usher with Diddy lately. I don't know. Um, but with the Russell Simmons thing, it could be one of those things where, like, hey, like, nobody had, we haven't talked about Russell Simmons in a minute. Nah, was, he has some controversies last year with his daughter. Oh, with his daughter yeah. and shit. But I'm talking about yeah. besides, like, that, that outside, that nah. uh, that movement part. So, I mean, to me, this is just, you know, the media kind of bring it up again. This could have been Usher just straight up, hey, you still my peoples. Let me come out here and visit you. And now it's all on media because of who we are. I mean, that's how it works. When yeah. You it, right? No, no, you're right. But I'm just saying, you know, it's like one of those things. Maybe I just came here to talk to you. Like, if you see Usher with Diddy again, then it's like, yo, is he supporting him? We don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, regardless of what we do or don't know, we do. He, what they know is that what the reaction is going to be. So that's one thing that is certain. That's who we are. Same so, thing. We have, we, hey, listen, yeah, you haven't seen him for a minute, huh? Correct. And Diddy used to be on Instagram. Heavy. I'm saying. Every Diddy was time, outside everywhere. I mean, every time Drake posts Tory Lanez. <laughs> I'm saying every time a, 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 a female class of Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So regardless of what we know, the conversation or the, the discourse or the support or not, what we do know is how people are going to react. Correct. Because what we do assume... Close proximity is support. Support. I agree. You know what I'm saying? You're just, posting them like Drake do with Tory Lanez. Support. If you doing a music video and you got a, a, a Hitler poster in the background, support. That's what I'm saying. So if you name your albums Hitler with Hermes, support. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So yeah, but I just think I just think you know. I feel like. I mean, that's just part of the world because, you know, celebrities are who they are, who people have made them to be. But at the end of the day, to me, celebrities are still regular people. I still want to go support my friend. I still want to, you know what I'm saying? My friend is my friend. I want to be there for my friend. Yeah. And so, you know, it's one of those things like, all right, let me, why can't I be with my friend? Yeah, you're right. You know, like, so that's that's my only thing about it. It's like, you know, now don't get me wrong. After what I heard about Usher. What you heard about Usher? No, no, after that, the little Diddy reports. And then, you know, you're going out there with Russell Simmons. That look real. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, listen, I don't judge anybody's lifestyle, but you just you did just get married. He did just get married. His wife might have probably was with him. Oh, oh, we're just oh, saying. Oh, this game real. Shout it's out to the, to the Raymond. <laughs> the Raymond Oh, this game real freaky out there, though. Listen, man. All I know is uh, had this been... Chris Brown, oh, Trey Songz. Oh gosh! Oh, this would have been—they would have ran a muck the, out, the outcry would have been, been ridiculous. Would have been extremely different. That's all I know. Um, oh, off of that real quick, real funny because you said Drake. <laughs> they said that Drake supposedly, you know, what I'm saying he always gonna get his. Uh, he always gonna have Nicki back because they showed a picture of him supposedly uh, out on a date with Lotto's sister. <laughs> Listen, man, at some point, a conversation got to be had. Well, a conversation, the whispers have been there about Drake and his his uh, obsession with very young women. She's 21. I'm just saying. Yeah, he, he's 35. I thought he's older than 35. You sure he's 35? He might be 37 now. Okay. He might, he might be 37 he now. Might be 37 now, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, he, the teenage fever, he got a lot of songs. He got a lot of associations. The Georgia Smith thing came up. Uh, the girl from Stranger Things came oh, up. Yeah, Bobby. We're not going to mention a video maybe, maybe from like, 12, 13 years ago when, when they brought a girl on stage. stage. She was what, supposedly 17? 
that's what she said. She was 17, and he continued to do. Did she, she, she said that loud. I, I, I kind of see the video. on the just, microphone. Oh, she did? And he repeated it on the microphone. And yeah, he, just, he put his tongue all in her mouth. Absolutely. Freak ass. All I'm saying is, had this been somebody else, that's what I'm saying. We got to. They, they pick and choose. Do we really be upset at the act, or do we be upset at who does the act? It's always. No. So, for people, it's about who does the act. Because you think about this, right? Look how far it went with the how the meat mill slander just went crazy. Right, yeah. And the Usher shit just went under the boat. Exactly. It was like, man, nobody give a fuck about what Usher doing. We like Usher. Meat Mill, fuck him. Let's just talk about that. Like we gonna throw him under the bus and we gonna stomp on him while he's down. And it's like like damn, like what that man It's almost like it pays to brand yourself as a likable person more so than anything else. Like the Very honorable nice shit don't matter. Like you being you being somebody that really stands up for what they believe in. No, just make sure people agree with you. I mean, I'm trying to and they're going to do whatever and they're going to support you however they see fit. Because we've seen public displays of nonsense and people, like you said, have just looked over it. Of course. Not mentioned it. Well, man, we got a video of Cardi B saying she used to drug yeah. men mm -hmm. and steal. And rob them. And people said, I mean, she, she was a stripper. She was doing what she had to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dude, literally. Literally. They were sticking up for her. get it out because <laughs> they were disgusted with shit. No, they were sticking up for her. Like, oh, you should have. I've seen, I've seen people tweet and say, glad, because they do that all the time. Like, wrong is wrong. Listen. Wrong is wrong. We're not even going to talk about how folks is justifying if Tori shot Megan if she really got like we ain't gonna talk about how many theories <laughs> went to that bullshit. We ain't gonna talk listen man. So how Kelsey came out and said there might be a video, but it's AI. Listen, Kelsey, come on, bro. So it might, it's some wild shit going on. Let's just keep it real, man. Folks don't be mad at what people do. No, they just they just think if about they what like it is. you. It is what it is. They're gonna make an excuse for it and look and look the other way. That's all I know. But hey. I mean, if you wanna talk about old and young. Get to take it away. Take it away. So, months ago, um, there is a, you know, well, he was a sensational rookie, um, an up-and-coming NBA player. Yeah. Um, Jalen Green, 21, third year with the Rockets, I believe. Yeah, I think it's third or fourth year. Yeah, yeah third or fourth year with the Rockets. Um, he will be, depending on how he finished out the year, he will be, um, you know, getting a, an extension yeah, that's worth a lot of money. His rookie contract. Yeah, his rookie yeah. contract that's worth that's, that should be worth a lot of money, but he didn't make any All Star, so we got to see how that goes. But um, Jalen Green, twenty one, a few months ago, we seen um, the infamous Dre Michelle. Yes. The infamous. We all know Dre, one of the best BBLs ever. Correct. What, ever. Breathtaking. Yo, listen, I ain't allowed. I would fuck with Dre too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I've never heard. maybe for me right now, but like with his money, not different. Yeah, so we seen her, you know, out with you know Jalen Green, and people have been like, man, that's kind of crazy, cause she's thirty five, thirty seven, thirty nine. Oh, yeah, shit, she's forty. She's thirty nine years old, and she has a son who's the same age as Jalen Green. She maybe does. a year, maybe a year older, I believe. Absolutely correct. And um, now it's come out. That she is pregnant now. I mean, people speculated before when she was at the game. She had a little jumper on, overalls, what people call it, and they seen a little bump. Nobody said anything. She just came out on Instagram and showed that she's pregnant with a baby girl. But the funniest shit about that to me was she ain't, she ain't mentioned Jalen Green, none of that shit, right? Your boy Kyle Kuzma went in. Kuz. Yo, shout out to Kuz. Kuz is a nut. He said the record straight, yeah, man. Yeah, he said it's up, family, and tag Jalen and Dre on you know, the. You know on the what post. The fuck it is, man. That's that's what a real one do. Try to try to act like you're throwing congrats when you really want to cuck him. That's that's exactly what you're doing. Though. She that's got you. <laughs> nigga, nigga talking about. Dumbass. It's up, family. Them child support checks is up. This nigga's time to cut the check, man. And she got him. She got him. Oh, she nice got him. And young, and not just hope and pray She's that young brother. Sniper, bro. Listen, man. She's I hope I hope that young brother is as healthy and as ex exceptional of a talent he possibly can be, because Lord knows. That check is that if check. that young man in the NBA careers, you never know, bro. That that shit could turn from you that shit could turn from a fifteen year career to four real quick. Lord knows if that boy gets on a child support and he ends up not playing, 
and that he stuck with that bill for the next 18 years. Ooh. You want to talk about a sad story that's seen over and over again. We haven't seen too many of them stories. We haven't seen too many of those stories. 22 years old, bro. 21. 21 years old, pardon me. I just think at some point, man, where's the where's the people around you? Where's the that's guys, a, That was my man. next thing. Where's the guy that's around you? Because, you know, don't get me wrong. I get it. We all, like, some of us out here, you know, we we love Dre. I think Dre, oh, he is 22, I'm sorry. He just turned 22 in February. We, Dre. He got pregnant when he was 21. Yeah. Dre is, I ain't gonna lie. Me, I'm slid all through there. But we know who Dre is. Dre has been around for years. We know where Dre's specialty is with getting with the NEA and NFL, the who's popping and who's not, whatever. And to me, it's this clear decision of we ain't got a nut and everything, bro. Exactly. You don't have to nut and everything just because you can. Like, uh, she still looks good though. I just don't understand, bro. I mean, bro. you can you can wife her, you can do all these things, wine and diner. My brother, a child is forever. Mm-hmm. And for you to be that young with all the information available to you, the crazy thing is, it's not your fault. It's really this old lady taking advantage oh, of man. wet behind the ears. Here's ass nigga. <laughs> so pardon me, Jalen. I take that back. Drea predatory behavior is disgusting. Okay. She deserves to be ridiculed and exiled for what she is doing to this young boy. He didn't know what he was doing. Listen, man. It I don't says know, she's a certified sniper, dog. I don't know what 21, 22 year old is out here making the greatest decisions in the world. But we know damn well we was a whole lot smarter at 30 than we was at 21. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, and we damn sure a lot smarter at 39, which she is. And they, we they, were at and they say that 22. women mature faster than Much men regardless. Faster. So she already got a child. She's already been with the athlete. She knows exactly how to take advantage of these of these folks. And especially at especially at his age, because she has a son his age. Which to me is Dre, that's that's kind of sick. Kind of. It's pretty sick. Not to mention. Like, your, your son is the same exact age as your baby father. And not to mention, this is just hearsay, but I did see a post that said she used to look after her babysit Jalen Green's ex-girlfriend. That's how large of an age gap there is. So hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out. She used to babysit his ex-girlfriend. Jalen Green's ex girlfriend. Do you, so that means you done has see, ties so, to Drea Michelle. So Drea, you are a predator at this point. Because to me, what I'm what I'm hearing at this point is that you done seen Jalen Green before at his young age, before he done turned 18, 19, 21, 22. Exactly. So that means you done you've been stalking. You've been you seen the come up. We you know he was he was listen. He was on Instagram early in high school. He he was one of those famous like you know high school athletes that was on Instagram. Listen, we already know what happened when a uh, bundle of Britney was Britney Renner was talking about. I'm on college campus looking for these young. All right now, hey, and, all right and, now. And Britney's not even; she's still in her twenties. Dre, you a little Britney Renner is a little younger than that. I mean, she did, but she 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 another one that caught uh Britney Renner's thirty two. Oh, okay. But I mean, before that, a few years ago, she yeah, was still in her twenties. So I mean, she caught PJ Washington. Caught him. Another what behind it is. Hey man, yo, yo, get your, get some guidance in your life, man. Get some older OGs that's been around. You know, you know what? Here's what I say. It's disgusting. Now here's what I say. Part of that too is, look where he's at. He's in Houston. What besides Fred Van Fleet just coming? He has no vets on that team to give him any type of guidance to say, hey yo, uh uh-uh, uh, you careful with that one? Because think about this, right? That's a fact, yeah. Jalen Green is, you know, he's slated to be one of the a premier athlete at some point in his career when it finally clicks, right? A premier athlete in the NBA. He's 22. I look at everything around him that he could possibly go for. Not only is he's in Houston, I heard what they look like in Houston. Oh, we are, no. I, heard, I already Houston. heard what they look like in Houston. But you, look, look where you at. You can, you got the money. You can go, you can go anywhere. You can bag anything. Uh, any, all these things available to him. Right? Listen, you have the world at your feet, and you got caught. That shit must be fired, dog. That shit must be fired. I'm disgusted. 
So you, so you would fuck her? Never. No? Never. No, I didn't say would you fuck her raw. I'm just saying would you I'm fuck answering her? the question. Never. I'm out of here, man. I can't believe that. I ain't gonna lie, Dre, if, if you weren't pregnant, though. Couple more uh, music topics before we close out, man. Let okay. me see what Nelly was talking about, man. You know? Nelly was on uh, LeBron's show. Bob Shop? Yeah, the show. Okay, the shop, okay. And uh, he has some things, some claims to make about his error. Oh. Let me pull it up. I can, uh, right here. I have it. Okay. I'm going to share. I'm going to send it to you right now. Okay. Okay. From the Lou, did you ever have chip on your shoulder because everything was oh, yeah. LA, New York. Oh, I always right. talk about that with the Midwest man. I'm like, God damn right. Yeah. God damn right. But you got to understand, my era of music was the toughest era in hip hop ever. Ever. When I put out songs, I had to go against DMX, Eminem. Jay-Z, Eminem, Lil Wayne, 50 Cent, Luna. Nah, yes. Yes. All of us are fighting yeah, for right. one spot. So in to, from two from ninety nine to like two thousand and eight ten, it's the hardest ever ever to get back. Nigga, shut up. Yeah, we heard Cali say it about you. Said it. Uh, <laughs> Nigga, shut up. Yeah, we heard Cali say it about you. Said it. So yeah, he's saying two thousands was the hardest era of music because there was so many superstars that were going for the number one spot. What's your thoughts? I agree. Why? I, because I completely disagree. You completely disagree? Strongly disagree. And I think that's horrible logic to you. Mm. I just think he did that to boost himself up because he wanted to make his career look outstanding. Well, I mean, he was he was a... He he did go dying. Okay. You know, um, he was... I mean, I, he didn't, to me, he didn't last that long. Shit. He didn't last that long. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think his music for me it just did it because I mean he had some songs throughout sprinkled out. Pimp Juice came later and all yeah. that shit, but he did his little country album and all that shit. But I mean, I say it was simply because of to me, like when you look at artists now and music now, nobody's really selling records that many records. You got only have a few people that are stand out. You have the Drakes, you have a Travis Scott, you have a Kendrick. But if you J Cole, how many albums is J Cole really selling? He he hasn't sold Kendrick or Drake's numbers. You know, there's only, I mean, he's a superstar, don't get me wrong, but you look at the numbers that these were moving opposed to what they're moving now. Um, I think that every, everybody's famous at this point. You got 50,000 rappers. Everybody's famous, so strictly because of social media. So these, I feel like with that, that was real generic and like the music was more, um, not generic, but it's genuine. And all of these sales were real. And so every, like literally, you can go on, you can go on Instagram right now, TikTok, and somebody's famous off of rapping. Or making a song. Okay. So how many, and to me, how many superstars are there really in rap right now at this point? Three, maybe. Cole, Kendrick, Ye, Drake. And then everybody else falls under yeah. it. And so you look at, I, I agree with him to that point where you look at how many people it was. You had the J, you had Nas, you had Eminem, mm -hmm. DMX. You have Ludacris was coming up. You have 50 Cent did what he did. You know, you even look at when 05, when Young Jeezy came out. You had that whole with the South. It's just, you had to be somebody and make a, you had to make big records to kind of go accordingly. Right. Anybody else now, you're going to hear, you hear that song for two seconds, you hear an album for two seconds and it's a rap. Albums don't last long, songs don't last long. Okay. So that's just my thought. I mean, you literally just described why it's harder in today's era than it is back in the day. How? Because it's tougher to sell music. Nobody's selling. Nobody's selling. But There's no superstars. But, you but, can't you can't even be relevant with just music alone. It's nobody that's just relevant because they're music. And but I think There's that's the no point. Mainstream that's, artist that's relevant. But I think because that's, because that's the point he was making. His era of music was tougher. Nobody else everybody's getting famous outside of just straight music. That's the point, because music is harder to sell now. It was easy to sell. But you but you're already famous. You're making money off of this. You're you're good. You're doing what you're I don't think people are even intentionally trying to sell music at this point. Because time. they can't. That's my point. He's talking that, about competing for the number one spot yeah, because that was a feasible thing. Because I don't think they're who, good enough. Who what what artist today is is Dropping, planning to get a number one song on a billboard. Which one of these artists is expecting that? Outside of the Drakes, the J. J. Cole just got his first number one. Ever. As a superstar. Ever. 
who is it who what rapper is expecting to get a number one billboard um if i go back to the 2000s every nigga he listed got a chance to get a number one spot on the billboard every nigga he listed is going platinum everybody it was a bunch of superstars it was easy to be because, to be a superstar they actually had the music at this point i think they're... that's that's debatable mm. that's debatable mm. it's a matter of preference because soldier boy was one of the most successful ever would you call his music quality all right then it was easier to sell music at that time yeah or no was 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 soldier boy not popping in the 2000s was soldier boy not going diamond he said 99 to 2010 right okay that's all, that's all i'm saying so I can name 20 rappers that were superstars off one album back in the day. Maybe. 50 Cent, Soldier Boy. Well. I'm just saying, your debut album, mm -hmm. you cannot drop a debut album today and expect to be a superstar. It's physically impossible. We don't even know when people's debut album is. They my drop, point, they that's drop my 50, point is they that. They drop 50 albums. That's my point. And is then that. they come out and say, hey, this is a debut album. What do you say? What do you say? Ludacris. Mm-hmm. Platinum selling artist. T.I. Platinum selling artist. Jeezy. Jay-Z. Nas. Wu-Tang was still dropping albums. LL Cool J was still dropping albums. Mace. DMX. Must I go on? Everybody was successful in the 2000s. Jada Kids. Fabulous. They, All the They're way more successful. The rappers way. are way more successful now than they are. That's not true, bro. They're, they're more successful, period. More than How? They're getting money outside We're of music. We're not talking about money. But I'm, he said going for a number one spot, so you switching the argument. We didn't I'm say who getting the most money. Because you should be talking about music. But my point is that. I'm saying that to me, it was tougher. You had better quality artists to me in that time. That's, Everybody I mean, was just you, can't, you can't measure what's quality art. That's a matter of opinion. So you got to move No, no, no. My opinion is right. That's cool. What I'm saying no, no, is. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, you know, my He said it was tougher because he had to compete for a number one spot. Because you right? had to compete with greats. What I'm saying. Anybody's competing with the great. Everybody's just. That's my point. It ain't no greats. It's because it's harder to be great because nobody cares about music. It's superstars back in the day. You can be a debut artist that just got introduced by 50 Cent and go number fucking one. Drake can introduce a nigga like Four Bats. What number one song do we expect for him to have? What number one album do we expect for Four Bats to do? He introduced the fucking party next door. What did his career do? He introduced The Weeknd. The Weeknd separated from him to go number one. Now, what are you talking about? He didn't. The, the, he, Lil Wayne had to introduce 20 people to get three successful ones. The rest of the, it's like this. It's no. It's nobody that's coming out that's successful to the level that it was back in the day. Anybody could sell a record. Rich Boy was going platinum. Any one hit wonder. Any, any of them niggas. Name them. The quality. That's that's your opinion. I don't think no no. That's it's a, your it's a opinion. Fact. The point is the music it's a, it's business a, a was was more emphasized. You can be a superstar off just music alone. Now, I, okay, I agree wanted, with that part. That's what I'm saying. So, but if I you, still, you, my facts still, I still stand on facts that it was quality music. I don't care what you, what you. What about I'm say saying, that's fine. That, that's fine. Wrong, you, can, you can find people that like this era <laughs> of music better back then. It, you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't, it wasn't these type of artists. It wasn't no young thugs. It wasn't none of that. There was no futures back then. So cool. We can agree or disagree on who was a better artist back then. Point is. Everybody was a superstar that was selling platinum albums at that time. You know how hard it is to go platinum as a new artist in the 2020s? Do you know how difficult it is to sell an album? The niggas that have been in the game 15 years as stars cannot even sell 50,000 first week in 2024. Who? Doja Cat sold $50,000 and she had a number one record. I mean, so 50,000 uh, albums first week and she had a number one record on that same album. It's my point exactly. No, no, no. That, that, that's a, there's a point right there. You the ain't got to sell that much to get that number one. The point is, I said, first of all, she can't sell records. Back in the day, she would have sold 300,000 first week. No, I put out better quality. Don't she can't got quality, man. No, she do. She got it. What are we talking about? I'm it's saying, is, is Doja Cat not Nora? Gunna sold 80,000 records. And they was calling that rap album of the year in 2023. Get more people to like your music, bitch. Fuck these niggas. Streaming don't count the same as records. It don't. Know. It's like fifteen hundred. So that's streams. why it makes it more difficult. You're right. Niggas got a bundle. They got to sell three, four different versions of an album just to be in a conversation of a hundred thousand. Yeah, bitch ass niggas, man, trash. Kanye West been dominating with an album, and he sold one fifty first week. 
Like, this is Kanye West, bro. And he been whooping the rest of these niggas. We been waiting on Schoolboy Q, me, me, all these niggas to drop. They drop. And Kanye's out selling these niggas. And he's, and he's canceled. That lets you know the state of the music. If you ain't Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole, Travis Scott, you're not doing anything successful off music in the industry. That's a fact. None of these niggas is making no noise. I don't think any of these niggas want to be successful with music. That's my point. Everybody back then, their focus was, like he said, I want to compete and with that's Eminem, I, and Lil Wayne, and I feel and that's why I feel that. like it was tougher because niggas actually wanted to compete and do music at that time. That, like because they knew they, that could actually happen. You can focus on the best body of work of all time. It's not going to make a difference unless you got a name. Nelly debuted in 2000 with Country Grammar. Nobody knew who the fuck he was. Midwest was never popping. It was nobody out of there that ever had a name. He came she out and, and went diamond. He had a pop song. He had Country Grammar and the shit went diamond. Please tell me, can you ever envision that happening in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024? Please tell me. I think somebody recently just went down, like Post Malone or something like that. Post Malone came out years ago. I said in the 2020s. We got to see what happens. I asked you, who can, who can you even possibly uh, align that to? Because if a nigga come out and do get that successful in 2024, they're going to call him a plant. I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be like Drake, J. Cole, Travis, or Kendrick. I said that came out in the 2020s. I don't even know who came out in 2020. That's my point. That's my point. It was regular for a nigga to drop a debut album in the 2000s and go number one and sell platinum records. I think you're wrong. Tell me where to lie. Ludacris was selling. Lauren Hill was selling. All these niggas was selling, man. Everybody was selling records. They had coke in their records, though. <laughs> the fuck? They had coke in their records, man. Mad like Secure So How many records that shit was trash? In your opinion. I, that's what I said to begin with, right? Yeah, so no, that's no, why no, so no, that's no. why I said I can't no, measure no, probably music, right? That's what I said, right? Hold on, this is where we differ. Like you have an opinion, I have facts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these niggas, man. Look at these niggas. Look at all these niggas that Eminem, platinum. Who is this nigga? Who who is this? Ghostface Killer, platinum. Common, platinum. Outcast, you know, diamond. Like who who is he? Everybody was selling records, man. Dead Press, Slum Village, all these bum ass niggas that was dropping random albums. They were dropping was quality selling, music, dog. Was they were selling dropping quality fucking the, music. The Wu Tang, the double Wu Tang, been out of style niggas still selling nah, records. Big L, come on, this, this is this is this is classic music right here. They can't name a song by Big L. <laughs> Beanie Siegel, yeah, Rod yeah, Digger, yeah. Come on. Him, like come on, dog, come on, dog, Scarface, like come on, bro. Everybody was said Snoop Dogg, Big Pun. You name great. That's cool. It could be great. You know why? Because they were selling fucking records. Nah, they were great. They were great. Yeah, tell me you're great. They didn't sell no records. They didn't sell no records. Yeah, go ahead. They did. Yeah, exactly. Fab. Fab ain't selling records. I wasn't selling records like that. I'm asking you compared to what? Compared to what? Because eighty thousand gets you album of the year in twenty twenty three. How many um fabulous sell? Street Dreams, right? That was the debut. What's the name of the debut? No, nah, debut is Ghetto Fabulous. Ghetto Fabulous. Yep. Two thousand one, September eleventh. One hundred forty three first week. That's not no records. Platinum out. I'm asking you a question. No. Nah. <laughs> What Street Dream sold in 03? Mm -hmm. First week? I'm trying to look it up. 185,000, bro. Because Fab was a quality artist. Look at Gunner. You I think, know, right? You, th you think Gunner and Fab is the same thing? No. I know, right? What get, I'm saying get is. Get Gunner snitch ass about it here. I don't snitch your rat ass nigga. <laughs> Tell that nigga Nelly, stop lying, man. Everybody was uh, good in music. In fucking 2000s, man. Everybody was a superstar in 2000. It was 50,000 superstars. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. Lil Bow Wow, was Romeo, Bow -Wow. Master P. All them niggas were selling records, man. Romeo couldn't rap for shit and he was a superstar, little kid rapper. Because Master P was his daddy. My point exactly. All and, it takes is a nigga he, to introduce and you. And he had a TV show. It, how you get a TV show? How, how are the bum ass nigga rapping like that? Because it's his daddy. You know who else had a TV show? Nelly. T.I., all them niggas had TV shows. You know why? Because it was easy to be a superstar back then. All these niggas are superstars now, man. Who? Look at Playboy Cardi. We ain't seen this. 
Go ahead, go ahead. Give me, give me ten superstars right now. Yeah, because Nelly already named ten of them in two thousand. Yeah, give me ten superstars. Drake, J Cole, mm-hmm. Kendrick, mm-hmm. Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Let me see Doja Cat. Twenty One Savage. You might want to rethink Doja Cat. We just went to a concert that was sold out. A lot of people sell out concerts. Ghana just sold out its uh, tour when they dropped the dates. What's your point? I, I think Doja Cat is. Doja Cat. I mean, you selling fifty thousand first week, and we got a different measurement of superstar. Okay. Boy. Also, uh, what's your boy name? What's that? What's the big boy? Are you Brown Wave. Me? If that's a superstar, cool. That's what I'm saying. You look at the definition. Was Rod Wave? Is Rod Wave bigger than Ludacris was? Yes or no? Is Rod Wave bigger than Ja Rule was? Yes or no? Oh, Ja Rule was. Ja Rule was huge. I'm asking you about Ludacris. Was Was Rod Wave bigger than Ti was? Yes or no? Was Rod Wave bigger than Jeezy was? Yes or no? Technically, he is. He's bigger than always. <laughs> <laughs> it's over with, man. Tell is. Nelly knock it the fuck off, man. You want to hype about you uh, ra- uh, selling all these records because you always uh, get left out of the conversation, man. He Stop. went diamond, man. Exactly. Exactly. He's he trying went, to hype up that diamond shit because he always left out the conversation. Because he, but, man, I also all these niggas, I was competing with Lil Wayne. We don't give a fuck. I mean, to be honest, Nelly wasn't competing with anybody. Like, he Thank was, you. He was the only nigga in that lane making that type of music. Nobody, style. nobody was called Nelly a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> nobody was just complaining about yo if Nelly getting these bars. Nick, nigga, Flo Rida was a fucking super. Like stop it, bro. Pitbull, it, it, <laughs> Plies, Trick Daddy. Are you kidding me? Everybody was popular in the two thousands. We made they made better music. What's the nigga name? Um, so the Shaka. <laughs> Nick Cannon was a good rapper in the 2000s. No, he bro. wasn't a good rapper. Nick Cannon had a hit record in the 2000s. Because he had R. Kelly. I know. I know who, because everybody could be a superstar. You know what I'm saying? Because R. Kelly was out here showing that, you know, peeing on people's eyes. All right. So that was a little Drake gave I Love McCoy one of the biggest features of that time. And what the fuck happened to him? Nick Cannon became bigger than I Love McCoy. That's what the fuck happened. It was easy to become a That's because Nick Cannon, Nick, Nick Cannon has a TV show oh, and yeah. movies. And, and guess what? If, if, if it was I Love McCone and that got that R. Kelly feature, he would have had a TV show too, nigga. Everybody got a TV show back in the day. Stop it. I feel like it's hate, man. Christina Million, Jayla, everybody was popping in the 2000s. I want to hear that shit, man. Stop it, Nelly. So what do you feel? Okay, with that being said, let me just ask this. 3-6 Mafia, I'm keep going. UGK, all these niggas, man. Go ahead. What do you feel? Cisco. Like? <laughs> All these niggas. Missy Elliott. Come on, man. You name it. Lil John. You name it bona fide superstars though, that are still like. That's my point. You name it superstars that are still superstars today. Mr. Cole still a superstar? I mean, they still talk about him. He in jail now. Petey Pablo still a superstar? They still play his music. Mayno still a superstar? He's still on, he's still on radio. All right. He naming these people that's relevant still. <laughs> Imagine still. Buster Rhymes. He's still relevant. These niggas is, is, is you washed still, up. This, you just seen Buster Rhymes. Twister. Twister still a superstar. Right. You seen Twister rapping to the gunshots. Twister still a superstar. You seen, you seen Twister is, rapping that's to the gunshots. That's superstar behavior, right? So, Soulja Boy still a superstar. Chingy still a superstar. I don't know. Everybody was a superstar, <laughs> man. Get Nelly the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Joe Button. He got one of the biggest podcasts in the fucking world. He's still relevant. I'm done with this shit, man. It's hey man, Lupe all right, so fiasco. What? Everybody was selling records. Back. All right, tell me, what was the better David era of Bannon. music? Then? What What do you feel is the de- better era of music? Uh, twenty tens. I go nineties then twenty tens. So two thousand to two thousand ten. No. Well, I thought we was going by the decades. Right? Are we doing decades, or what you mean by era? How you want to define it? Do you consider like so when you say from the nineties until when? The nineties, like the, the decade of the nineties. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. So you don't you don't put which is the decade of the two thousands. No, they 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 fall short of the two thousands. I'm saying the number one for me mm-hmm. will be between the nineties and the twenty tens. Okay, okay. Yeah, you got Yay, Jay Z, all that in twenty tens and nineties. You got Pop, West Coast, all that. So for me, it'd be between those. Two. So you probably be for the two thousands and then nineties. No. Cause for me, oh, you talking about you? Yeah, because I, because I mean, to me, that's when that's that was the Jays in the year. Nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't this year. I, it felt like a better year. It was twenty ten. I said 2000, 2010. Yeah, the twenty eleven and up, and then that's then that goes on. But up until Ye dropped his best four albums between two thousand and two thousand ten. 
It's debatable, but I, I wouldn't argue. I mean, I'm not mad at that. I mean, what? That's what my beautiful Dark Tears Fantasy came out in 2010? Yeah. Yeah. And his first three albums were. 2010 is the 10s. That's 2011 is the 10s. No. It's 2000 to 2009. The 10s start with 2010. I don't know. I just don't agree with you. That don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even make sense. You gotta do. Well, hold on. How would the ten? How would the two thousand ten be included in the two thousands if it's a ten? That's just where I stopped it off at. <laughs> they can try to include everything. Yeah, ten I, years. That I go. Uh, yeah, I like. Um, even though I like I mean, eclipses in two thousand. Mm -hmm. Two thousand might be third. Definitely be third. Then you go. Uh, well, eighties is up there too, but that's not for rap though. So the who? It's not for rap. The eighties. Oh, oh uh, well. Um, it's not for rap though. That's you had L Cool J, you had Run mm -hmm. DMC. Man, stop it, Stop. Yeah, I feel I feel it. Well, when the um Straight Outta Compton come out, 80s? Yeah, 88. Yeah, that, 88. that was that was great rap. Okay. That's, that, that was that was classic. 90s, you got Yeah, Jay, Nas, Biggie, mm -hmm. Ghetto Boys, mm -hmm. DMX, Missy, Big Pun, Ice Cube. Some dog. Lauren Hill, Snoop Dogg, Pop, DJ Quick, Most Def. Yeah, 90s is tough. I mean, if you, I think 80s rap was all right. Let me see who was in My, there. My, uh, Ditas. Yeah, motherfucking Cool Mo D. And yeah, this is KRS One. The fuck? Yeah, you got Run DMC, you got BC Boys, NWA, De La Soul, Curtis yeah. Blow. Curtis Blow. <laughs> <laughs> Slick Rick, Two Live Crew. Fresh Prince, Kid and Play, never. the DOC, Salt and Pepper, Biz Marquee, Too Short, Tone Loke, Public Enemy. Never. Come on, man. Never. Houdini. Yeah, cause I'm a whole. You know I'm a yeah Houdini, right? Stop. You know what I'm saying? Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Let me see what the 2010. Ice T. Mm -hmm. Dana Dane. Who? Yeah, Eric B and Rakim. I know you talking about. Them. Rob Bass. Who? Oh, no. Special Ed. Dougie Fresh, come on, bro. MC Light, EPMD. Look at what 2010s was talking about. Man, man you, are, you are nuts. Niggas had Drake, Kendrick, Future, Migos, Thug, Nicki, Wayne. That's about it. Go ahead, play, play boy Cardi, <laughs> Fetty Wap, <laughs> Julie. Come on, dog. <laughs> name the rest of these niggas, dog. I named all the big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> name the rest of these niggas, dog. You know what Ray Sherman was doing, nigga. Stop it. <laughs> That's my man for challenge. <laughs> yeah, Travis was in there too. Rick Ross. Oh, we ain't gonna talk about Rick Ross, Kevin. Oh, yeah. You Rick, Ross. Yeah. Rick Ross has one. Yeah, one of the Wale. Yeah. yeah, let's keep that going. Yeah, let's keep that going. Big Sean, Young Dolph. Yeah, yeah, Gucci. Gucci been out since 2000. <laughs> Teflon Dunn's 2010. Now let's keep it real. You're right. Let's keep it real. God forgives. I don't. Yeah. Had a couple. But deeper than rap is what? 2008? Oh, no. Nah. Nah. Yeah. You just, just missed out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Month you beat. That, that, that was a great album. It was. So yeah. I start with Teflon Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> start the best one. Hey, man. Thank you guys for watching again, man. We're going to check out because I think I got some more ignorant shit to say. I can't say on camera. That's why it's called Better Left on Set because I didn't say it. So uh, thank you for watching episode 45. I'm Sean. This is Cash. And I think we're out. Like, comment, subscribe. Yes, until next time. Till next time, man. Like, follow, share. All the above. Appreciate the support. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Say no to drugs.